if you were, if, if it was me, if I was running to be the DNC chair and I was actually trying to take power, I'll tell you what it would look like if I was strategizing. I guess I could tell you what that would look like. I'm running for DNC chair. Hi, my name is Debbie Lou Signan and I'm running for the DNC chair. So I'm in the debate. Now, this would never happen. They'd never let me anywhere near it because they do not let anybody who would really, really challenge their power anywhere near. Um, but all right. I would not say that the DNC primary was rigged. I would say this. Well, yes, the DNC primary was rigged and it appears we had a fraudulent primary. We had the uh, Arizona Secretary of State testify on March 30th that election fraud occurred in Arizona. She testified that people were being purged off the rolls and that, and that voter affiliations were being flipped so that San Senator Sanders voters were reporting that they could not participate in the primary. We further have come to understand that the Arizona database was hacked, according to the FBI. And, and since then, we have had reports that 20 databases were hacked during the primary election, according to the FBI. At the same time, hundreds of thousands of people or more reported that we were, um, that they had been purged off the rolls or their voting affiliation was flipped, making them ineligible. This appears to be systematic. It is too widespread and occurring to, across too many states to just being a glitch or a fluke. The Democratic Party either needs to hold a full independent investigation into this and, and uh, speak to the nation and investigate fully and uh, acknowledge this. Every single person who was involved in the collusion of the uh, Hillary Clinton campaign and the DNC uh, and the Hillary Clinton campaign against Bernie Sanders and more importantly against the constituents of um, the Democratic Party needs to immediately resign. They need to resign their position and they need to apologize to the American people. This is not a question of if this happened. This did happen. We have the documented evidence in the own words of the DNC and the Hillary Clinton campaign. We have the evidence. This is not a theoretical. This is true. And according to the report by the, um, the FBI and the CIA that came out at Christmas, they stated that the authenticity of those emails was not in question. The Democratic Party might, looks to have possibly engaged in criminal behavior. If the Democratic Party does not want to own its responsibility, the American people are fed up. 25% now is, is the composition of the Democratic Party. 14 million voters have left the Democratic Party since November. So... Either, either the Democratic Party has a full accounting of its behavior, the Democratic Party conducts an investigation, the, the Democratic Party issues a formal apology with specific actions and a list of people who are going to be fired, and um, or, or rather, if they do not, they don't have to have me as DNC chair. That's fine and dandy. But there are millions of people who are done with the, the cesspool of both of these corporate uh, duopoly parties that do not serve the interest of the American people. Rather vie to be the, uh, the servants of the corporatocracy and the military industrial complex. And if the Democratic Party is not interested in going this direction, I fully understand. That's fine. But apparently a lot of people are very excited about my candidacy. And so since we have the majority of 43% of the American people who are done with both parties and many people ready to unite across party lines, 
conservative, green, libertarian. We will move forward and we will have a post-partisan people's movement where we will create an alternative and we will not be saying, mother, may I or will I? We will simply take our own power rather than grovel at the feet of people who will not even speak out loud or admit the crimes they just committed against us. Period. And then we will, I would leave. And I would move forward with that. Now, if Sam Ronan wants to do that, <laughs> bravo. That is how you take power. You demand something, and if they don't give it to you, you have to extract a price. That is what you do. You don't talk about compromise. You don't talk about um, olive branches. There are no olive branches. Take power. You cannot appeal to their higher angels. And unless you have something to threaten them with and put the fear of God in them, they're not going to give you a damn thing. We saw it with Bernie Sanders. What Bernie Sanders held the country in his hand. Bernie Sanders could have created an instant third party. Instant. Did he? No. No. He, in he endorsed a fraudulent candidate. Who, um, who, who was installed against the will of the Democratic Party constituents and has been the lead sheepdog back ever since. And is now, didn't take the lead position of power. Oh no, he's the, uh, the outreach coordinator. I think that's the specific title, the outreach coordinator, which is the salesman. So, you know, that's why I say with Nick Brana, I, I, I love the guy to pieces, but <laughs> You do not need to co-opt a politician who herds to the establishment to fight it. So all of this is how to take our power. We have no idea how to do that. And it's great that Sam is saying out loud the things that um, we already know. And that the, the, it's, it's, it's where the majority of the country is already at. That's where Bernie Sanders won the primary. And Bernie Sanders didn't win. And Sam's not going to win. So the question is, what do you do with that? Sam could do something with that. If Sam wants to uh, actually hold leverage and walk away from the party and to try to do, and lead and to do something different, he could. But if Sam is just going to um, allow himself to, to, to be managed and herded and then have Keith Ellison as the compromise and then try to talk people into staying in the cesspool like Bernie Sanders. What is he doing? What is he doing? So the question not is that is Sam a good guy? I'm not I'm not criticizing Sam uh, on, on his uh, his motives or whether he wants to really change it. But we have got to stop talking about political personalities or people saying some things that make us feel good. How do we actually take power? That requires, that requires a willingness to hold leverage. That, that, ha, that, ha, that And it requires a whole different level of call out. If Sam Ronan had called out the fact that, that Arizona was cheated, according to the Secretary of State, and demanded an investigation into that, that would have been something real. That would have, And, you know, what are you going to say? Well, he couldn't say that? Of course he could say that. Why couldn't he say that? There's no reason he couldn't. He's not going to win. It's not like he's going to lose the position if he doesn't play ball. So, um, you know... I'm not sure, I don't want to go hard on anybody, but I really think that we are, we are weak tea when it comes to strategy. And it's no wonder, it's no wonder that the establishment has such an easy time managing us. Because, I, I, I mean, what I see with, with people responding so strongly to Sam, uh, Sam Ronan, speaking out loud half the truth, and half the truth was it was rigged, and the other half of the truth was that it was blatant fraud. And anybody even saying a whisper of the truth is considered gigantic, huge leadership in the face of having no leaders. Um, so that, it, that would be my take on it. Um, I have no interest in the cesspool of the Democratic Party. If you were interested in, in, if you are moving forward with that strategy, the kind of stuff I'm talking about is what would be necessary to fight on that kind of level. It, it, it would be it would be balls out battle. It's not about talking and compromising. 
There's no compromising with these people. Everybody in that party is seeking to neutralize. Everybody in that party is seeking to, to, to uh, maintain the status quo because 95, 98% of the people involved in that party are not there to represent the people. They're there for their own wealth interest. They're there for their own power. They want to be millionaires. They are millionaires in those positions. And then they can be lobbyists and it's a sweet, sweet gig. And so, you know, uh, if that's the direction you want to go, that's the, that's the way you got to fight it on. And um, I've said this again and again. Uh, we expend so much energy that would be much better spent rallying to organize um, an actual um, alternative to this cesspool. Because what happens is in the process of trying to take back um, power from within this party, invariably you are spinning your wheels and you are constantly, instead of making plans to actually uh, organize, take power, create an alternative structure, you spend all your time just trying to get the Democrats to say out loud that they're corrupt. That's how low in the process you are. The, the country is ready for something else. The country is ready for something else. 14 million people since November, everybody's ready for something else. What is lacking is the leadership. What is lacking is the organization. What is lacking is the understanding that you don't need to co-opt a minority party when you already hold the majority number and position. You just don't.